Hi guys, so today's tutorial aims to show you just how simple and easy it is to set up your own procedural dirt and grunge shader within Cinema 4D. I'll be showing you how powerful the gradient feature is for actually completing this task. And at the end of this tutorial, you should have something uh, that you can apply to multiple objects. And I'm going to be showing you just how powerful that gradient feature is, uh, which is going to allow you to control the amount of dirt uh, that we actually see on our objects. So I hope you guys learned something useful from this. And without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so what I'm basically going to be showing you is how to create a dirt and grunge uh, procedural shader within Cinema 4D and Octane Render. And I actually used this exact same technique on my previous tutorial with the basketball. I found a dirt map online and you can see you're not just limited to adding dirt to objects. Over here, I tried to use it creatively to create like this wear and tear effect uh, that this basketball has actually been used. So you're not just limited to applying dirt to objects. Uh, you can get really creative with this technique and I'm basically going to be showing you how to set this up. It's actually really, really simple. So we'll be doing that in the next part. All right, so just to easily demonstrate this, I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to make this 48 just so it's got enough segments. Now, the way this dirt slash grunge actually gets applied to objects is dependent on how this object is actually UV mapped. So that's really important. And like I said, it's procedural. Uh, so the way the dirt's actually going to be laid out is actually going to be random. If I wanted more control over this effect, I would rather unwrap an object and take it over, uh, over to Substance Painter, which is a fantastic program, by the way, for painting textures. And that will give me a lot more control. But I want to show you guys how we can use the procedural dirt and grunge shader within Cinema 4D uh, just to come up with uh, some interesting textures. So we've got our sphere in the scene. I'm going to go to Create shader cinema 40 octane octane material we'll open that up and now like i said earlier what we actually want to find is the following we want to go ahead and look for stuff like this right they call dirt maps so all you have to do on google type in dirt map as soon as you see these black and white images like this uh, some of them i actually use this bump maps as well but or roughness maps uh, but we're actually going to use this in the, in the diffuse to generate uh, some nice texture and dirt slash grunge. So go ahead on Google, find images like this. So I'm going to be using this one for this tutorial, the same one that I use on my basketball. Then we can try these other ones as well during the tutorial. So this is what we'll be doing next. Okay, so I'm going to start off by just dragging this material onto our sphere. We'll open up the live viewer so we can see what we're doing and I'm going to create an area light as well. I'll place that above the sphere over here. Oops, wrong way. And I'm just going to decrease the power. Just want a little bit of light in the scene. Okay, so let's double click on this octane material. And the way we're going to set this up is we're going to go to the diffuse. We're going to go to texture, cinema 40 octane and use gradient. So we'll go into the gradient. Here by texture, we'll click on the arrow and load an image texture. Go into the image texture and then let's load one of those dirt maps. So we'll see as soon as I load the dirt map, we can already see uh, that it's applied that material onto our object over here according to how uh, this object's created and how it's UV mapped. So basically the power of using a gradient for creating this procedural uh, dirt and grunge shader, it means that we can control how much dirt we see on our object just by simply adjusting the slide over here. So if I move this black value up further, you'll see that it starts to add a lot more dirt. Now, this pure black is probably not a, a good color to use. So I'm actually going to just bump up that a little bit because nothing is really pure black, uh, even when it's dirt. Well, maybe it is. I'm not sure. But anyway, I don't really work with pure black values. But you'll see that if I keep bumping up this value over here, it starts to really, really add on a lot of dirt on our object. So if we adjust this white value, it's going to decrease the amount of dirt we have on our object. So that's just a really nice way to control how much dirt and grunge we want to appear on our objects. All right. So... 
again, the thing about procedural means that uh, we can apply this material to multiple objects. So if I brought a cube into the scene as well, we can just drag that material onto the cube and it's going to drag that grunge into different locations according to where it has been mapped. Now I'll just make that a little bit bigger so you guys can see what's happening here. But then again, like I said, we can control if there's too much dirt on this object. Just bring up this value over here and it will decrease the amount of uh, grunge and dirt that we see. Now, if we really want to start making this look like dirt, we have to start playing around with the overall color of this, right? So, if we just simply click on uh, click in the slide over here by this bottom how do I describe this? By this edge over here at the bottom, it's going to add one of these uh, pointers again and uh, these pointers are going to allow us to add some color to our dirt. So if I double click on this and let's say I go to brown, like a dark brown, you'll see that it starts to mix this together with all of these different colors. So we can get some really interesting results just by simply playing around with different colors like this. So maybe we want to add a lighter orange into the scene. Uh, Let's see, it's getting really crazy. Or maybe, I don't know, blue. But you guys can see, like, the possibilities are endless. Like, you don't just have to use this for dirt. Uh, you can create some really, really interesting grungy materials just by using this gradient slider. And then, obviously, like I said, you can control how much dirt uh, you actually want in your in your scene just by playing around with these sliders really is that simple guys uh, so let's see let's maybe change this black value and see now I made the black white and now we just get all different types of results uh, just from playing around uh, with these simple sliders okay so I did the exact same thing uh, with the scene that you see in the thumbnail over here uh, let me just open that up quickly uh, but this scene, these are just uh, basically DAS models that I've imported into the scene and uh, I've just applied again that grunge material onto the entire body and I created two different variants over here. One of them has more dirt applied to it while the other one is uh, has some dirt but uh, it's not as prominent as this one. So you'll see again just by using this dirt slider we can control the amount of dirt and grunge we see on our objects. So, like I said, the possibilities are endless for using this procedural uh, shader, guys. Uh, you can get really creative with it and come up with some interesting results. So, whoa, like you can see over there, I have no idea <laughs> what that is, but that's just blending a bunch of uh, grungy textures together. And you can see you can get actually quite artistic with this as well. All right. Right guys, and you'll notice like sometimes when I'm applying these textures, just with the way this character in particular is UV mapped, now you you might encounter uh, encounter this problem with uh, other objects as well. You'll see that sometimes, uh, again, because it's procedural, it's placing the stuff in random locations and we get like these really ugly, you can see like these seams. So the way I would fix this is I would save this image out and uh, on, I'll bring this into Photoshop okay and then uh, I would basically just use the uh, the clone stamp tool and I'll hold down alt and I'll basically just reference uh, different locations where other dirt is located just to break up uh, these ugly seams so I do something like that just to add more randomness uh, to our object and to break up those ugly seams so if you don't intend on uh, showing an object from uh, multiple angles or if you do you're just gonna have to do a little bit of manual work to fix uh, some of the seams that have been uh, that are visible like this so again I'm seeing this this is a lot more prominent with this DAS model uh, but if you do have see uh, seams in your scene just use this clone stem tool and uh, use it just to add some more randomness uh, to your object okay Okay, so back into Cinema 4D, and again, we've got our procedural texture over here, grunge texture, and since we've got all these parameters and stuff set up with all our colors, if we want to be artistic or try something different, all we have to do is load in a different image. 
So I'm going to try this grunge map that I got from Google as well. And let's see what results we get here now. Whoa, this looks really crazy. <laughs> and like I said, uh, the way this stuff is going to be mapped is definitely dependent. I mean, the way this uh, dirt's going to be applied is definitely going to be, uh, be dependent on how your objects are UV mapped. So let's see, maybe we'll just play around with some of these values. And uh, there we go. Now we've got these streaky lines on our character over here. Uh, maybe that can be something artistic. And I'm going to get rid of this bump map for now. So clear. Uh, maybe this is something you guys are going for. You've got all these streaky lines on here. And again, we just control that simply by adjusting a slider. So this is actually, it's really powerful, guys. We can build on a whole lot of dirt. We can have as little dirt as possible. Just a couple specks. Have really a, a minimal amount of dirt on our, on our character. So that's just one way to control it. Okay. Actually, let's see how that looks. Uh, pretty interesting. But again, we're getting uh, some really weird mapping over here. So, yeah, we'd really have to play around with this. Maybe you'd even have to duplicate the shader and apply this one shader just to this region and then rotate it so that all these streaks are running down like this. Uh, but you can get really creative with this. Now, we could take this material a little bit further and we could actually apply a bump map. So we could use that exact same uh, dirt map as a bump map in this case. So I'll go to Cinema 40 Octane Image Texture and let's load in that exact same texture. As soon as I apply this as a bump map, uh, what it's basically going to do is um, it's going to apply like some kind of height to the dirt over here. So I can see that this power is a bit too much. So I can control... Um, I can control the actual bump value just by adjusting this power slider over here. So if you maybe want, if you want this dirt just to have a little bit more dimension to it, uh, this is probably what I would do. Just apply a quick bump slider and as you can see over there, it adds this really nice uh, texture that you see over here, especially on this arm. Looks pretty cool. So maybe this could be useful if you've got an object that's got rust on it and uh, you just want to add some more texture to that rust. You can just use the exact same rough, um, exact same dirt map as a bump map. That can really come in handy. And another thing that we can do with this, if we go into gradient, if we really wanted to, we could actually animate this procedural dirt uh, uh, slash grunge layer. And in order to do that, uh, so those of you familiar with the animation tools in Cinema 4D, uh, all we have to do is click on Gradient and puts a keyframe key over there. Then I'll go all the way to 30 and let's see, let's reduce the amount of dirt and grunge that I see on the object and then click on Gradient again. So between 0 to 30, there's basically this dirt layer that starts decreasing on... Uh, on our statue here. So I don't know, you could get creative with that. Uh, maybe have an object in your scene that over time dirt star uh, starts building on it. So you could create like these uh, time lapse videos uh, of dirt uh, building on an object. I don't know, guys, it's up to you. You can get creative with this. Uh, but I've showed you how to create this procedural dirt slash grunge texture. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys find this useful. I'd like to see what you create with this. And yeah, as always, guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned for some more tutorials. All right. Goodbye.